I'm Chris Calloway with Word of the Nerd. I'm here at the Baltimore Comic Con, September 4th, 2016, with Ramona Freyden. Ramona, you worked on uh, Aquaman. That's back right. In, back why in she, the 50s. Tell, in the early 60s, yeah. I, I really am curious. What was it like working back then? I mean, was it difficult uh, working as a woman in the industry? Oh, no. I, I never... I never noticed any discrimination, anything unusual about working. The only thing was the subject matter. Not so much with Aquaman, but some of the later superhero stories were really for boys, okay. <laughs> for guys. And uh, I just didn't enjoy drawing superheroes that much. But it's, in terms of working, the actual working conditions, they were fine. Everybody, nobody treated me different than they treated anybody else. It wasn't, wasn't like being in the fire department or okay. the police department or okay. something. Okay. <laughs> and uh, so how long did you work on Aquaman? How many years from I think until uh, the last story I did was probably around 1962 okay. when he came out in his own book. Okay. But up until then I did it for, from 1952 until 62 or 3. And what other characters did you work on that our viewers might be familiar with? In, in Aquaman, you mean? Well, I created Aqualad. Okay. And uh, and I'm not sure any of the other characters are familiar. I, I don't even remember any particular villains or any other characters in Aquaman. I did create his mother. Okay. Atlanta, Alana, her name was. So. Was that your favorite character to work on, uh, Aquaman? No. What was it your was favorite? My least. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and what was your favorite? Oh, I like Metamorpho because I created oh, okay. it, and I love yes. working on Plastic Man and the mysteries that I did too. I like anything that's a little, a little offbeat and where people are interacting. You know, not just people hitting each other. Right. Right. A little more <laughs> to the story than just yeah, the usual yeah. bang, bang, bang. Yeah. Right. I like to. to be able to recognize a character and you know, sure. create it. How many years have you been coming to the Baltimore Comic Con? I think two or three. Okay. Yeah, I like this this one very much. They're, they're so good with kids. They, they have a lot for kids. Oh, yeah, they, they do. do. I, the kids just seem to love it. So. And I, I think it's great for the kids, too, because they get a chance to, to create things. And, oh, and yes. Learn, and I saw them over there learning how to create a comic book. It's, it's wonderful. <laughs> Are you doing other cons this year? Is this the only one? Oh or? yeah, I've been to uh, North Carolina, uh, North Carolina, and, and where else have I been? Uh, now it's all blending. Oh, San Diego. Okay. And Albany, you know. But mostly from now on, I'm going to stay on the East Coast. Yeah. The traveling really busy. gets grueling. Yeah. Yeah. Oh well, yeah. It's a, yeah. Yeah, I I really enjoy doing uh, conventions. I never did them for years, you know. And then when I quit doing Brenda. I started going to San Diego and I found I loved it. So I've been, you know, going to a lot of conventions every year now. I love the fans. I mean, it's just fun to meet them. Well, I, I think that's the most important part about going to the con, is getting a chance to interface with people and meet yeah, them. Because really. in an age of internet, which is wonderful, I like it, but I mean, to have a chance to meet someone face to face, I know. That's, I know. that's where it's really a lot of fun. Because back when I was a kid, I'd read these books and I would. I read Smiling Stan Lee and Jack King Kirby. I never met them. I didn't know who was behind yeah, the book. Maybe they were just names, credits in the book. But then now we're so lucky to have all these cons and this, this burgeoning fandom. We actually have the chance to go out and meet these people face to face. It's a wonderful thing. And it's particularly wonderful for the uh, Silver Age artists because yes. that happens to be in demand right now. Yes. I mean, whoever would have thought when we were doing those goofy little drawings back in the 50s and 60s, that anybody would even remember them, but it's it's just been an amazing sort of resurgence. You know, I I love the modern art. I love the modern creators. Um, I'm the editor for Small Press and Independent Press for uh, Word of the Nerd. But my heart belongs to the Silver Age. Yeah, That's where I, what's I, know. I first started reading was the Silver Age books. I know. And well, there's just they, something special about they were those real stories, you know. Yeah. And the drawing was for to tell the stories, not if I may say so, not to make posters to sell at conventions. <laughs> a little more sequential art, <laughs> yeah, you know, storytelling yeah. with the pictures. Yeah, storytelling, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, it was a lot of work, I would imagine, compared to today. I mean, I mean, not that I'm saying today's work isn't a lot of work, but I'm saying oh, there was like a, more to there's a, there's a lot 
well, in the older books, it's a lot more packed in, in terms of panels and panels. Um, there's oh, more detailed oh, yeah. artwork today. Oh my God, I, I'm astonished more detail. at how much detail they did in. Yeah. And how much action is, I mean, we never could have conceived of that back then. So I have to hand it to the artists today. I suppose, I suppose everybody lives up to what's happening at their time, so if there's no end to how complicated or how, yeah. you know, how involved they could be. Go away. I'm being interviewed. <laughs> I, I guess a better way to put it, I find that more stories today are more decompressed. Yeah. But they can do put more detail into the art, and yeah. they have more special coloring techniques. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Whereas back then you had to fit the story usually into one issue or yeah, less if there right. were multiple stories. Right. So that was the challenge there. I know. It was, well, it was. It, when I started, we did all these simple layouts. We didn't break up the panels at all, and we didn't do. Um, we didn't do. I just I think comics have been influenced by the movies to such an extent that they don't feel dialogues necessary that it's all become camera work or the equivalent of camera work and uh, back then we just you know we were careful that uh, you know there was always a narration saying what's yes. exactly happening so if your drawing wasn't that good the narration carried it through you know but you could always tell what was going on sequentially now it's just a it's like free form uh, so yeah I'm just trying to, you know uh, what do you call it it just it just streams out of like it doesn't seem to have any structure any particular form at least to my eye well sometimes I find it more difficult to jump into an issue of a current comic book and understand what's going on whereas yeah. back then it could be someone's first comic, and it was always, you got to be able to explain who everyone is in the book <laughs> without being repetitive yeah. and find a way to do that. So yeah. that it's, it's an entry place for everyone. And that's, that's a real challenge nowadays, because we do more compressed, decompressed storytelling. It's, it's hard if you come in in the middle. Yeah. You might feel like you're left out of something. You don't want to get involved in it. Sort of in a way, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, I don't know. I mean, I know that the old generation always is critical of the younger well. generation, so I'm just <laughs> doing it. <laughs> Do you have any advice for the current generation, those budding artists and writers out there? Go to art school, study, learn how to draw a figure, you know, just learn how to draw. And I mean, I think some kids make the mistake of just learning how to do all the details, the buttons and the, you know, the lights and all that stuff, but you really need to have the basics, I think. And the more you, I mean, I think most of the artists today are very accomplished artists, actually, so probably they don't need any advice, you know, the kids seem to just develop, you know, according to, they're living up to what's happening, you know, mm -hmm. to the standards. But, but I would say in general, go to art school, learn to draw, 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 draw. That's what I did, you know, for three years I drew from a model every single day, you know, and right. I learned how to do it. So you need a solid foundation, yeah. you have to practice. Yeah, yeah. Stay in school, kids, and that's what you have to do. Right. And there's no shortcut. Yeah, no, there isn't. There isn't. And, uh, well, that's the only, that's the basic advice that I give kids. Ramona, well, thanks so much for okay. your time. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Hope to see you again at another show. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.